This is Wednesday, March 23rd. It's going to be a short one today. I plan to record us talking about the very end of Heracles to make sure it's out there for those of you who need to know it. Uh, oh. Quiz today, make sure you've read the stories. Camp stuff is due. If you want to order your camp shirt, it's due next Thursday. <coughs> with the fifth labor, did we finish talking about this one with you? No. no. It was in the story, so hopefully you read it there. It's where you had to clean out the entire thing of poo in a single day from sun up to sundown. And it was uh, King Aegis's horse barn, which had over a hundred, oh, I'm sorry, over a thousand horses there. And he manages to do it without having to touch any of the poo himself. And how does he clean it in a single day? Remember. Rorio? He puts the river and it comes through it. Nice. Man. Throws gigantic boulders in the rivers, which are nearby, which redirects them, makes them flow through the middle of the barn, washes out all the poo, and then once it's all cleaned out and flooded, he then removes the rocks, all the poo is gone, does it in a single day, never has to touch the poo, thus proving that he is not only incredibly strong and brave, but also smart. He manages to get through, if you have questions about any of the other labors, I can answer them in a moment, gets through all ten labors, and once he finishes the last one, all of a sudden King Eurythesis claims that he is a cheater, and says, you got help from the gods on two of them, so I'm not counting two of your labors, and he throws in two bonus labors that he makes Heracles do. And so Heracles manages to get through 12 labors in 10 years and still completes it all. When he finishes the last labor, he uh, celebrates by getting married. He finds a girl by the name of Daenera. He and Daenera fall in love, and things go wonderfully. One day, he and Daenera are going for a walk on their honeymoon, and they're traveling through the woods when they run into a centaur. You guys know what a centaur is? Yeah, yeah. 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 half horse. Half, half man, half horse. They run into a centaur while they're out in the woods. And the centaur offers to help them because there's a river they can't get across. Uh, this is uh, Heracles. He's now a peaceful person now that he's done. And she's excited because she married the number one hottie. Uh, and they get to this river that was really wide and deep and fast flowing. And they can't figure out how to get across. And the centaur shows up and goes, hey, why don't I help you? And Heracles goes, well, how, how are you going to help? The centaur goes, well... Uh, your wife can jump on my back, and I'm a good swimmer, so I can take her across the other side, and that'll hopefully help her out, and everything will go well. Heracles goes, oh, well, thank you. The centaur goes, don't mention it, man. Happy to help out. So Daenerys goes and jumps on his back, and the centaur takes her across. On the journey, going from one side to the other, he, the centaur, and Daenerys are chatting and talking, and the centaur realizes that Daenerys is not only a hottie, but incredibly nice and friendly and outgoing, and she's a great person. So the centaur decides to do what any good centaur would do, which is kidnap her. And so he goes, you're mine! And Daenerys naps her and takes off running on the far side. Daenerys freaks out. Oh my goodness, I'm being Daenerys napped! And she starts yelling and screaming. Heracles wants to stop them, but he's still on the other side of the river. So how is he going to stop the centaur? No, he's too far away. Shoot him with the bow. Shoot him with the bow and arrow. So he pulls out the bow and arrow, sees the centaur running away, and fires, pew, and hits the centaur as he's running, dropping the centaur to the ground. Daenerys runs over to the centaur and starts kicking him. You're such a bad horse, man. Why would you try and kidnap me? And while she's yelling at him and kicking him and the centaur's rolling on the ground, he goes, I'm sorry, will you ever forgive me? And she goes, no. And he goes, what if I give you a gift? And she goes, ooh, a gift. And he goes, yes, I will give you a gift. Do you know the secret of centaur blood? She goes, I do not know the secret of centaur blood. He goes, centaur blood, it is a little known fact, it is an aphrodisiac. Do you guys know what an aphrodisiac is? No. It was supposed to be a potion that was created by Aphrodite, and it has special powers. So a potion created by Aphrodite, what would it make people do? Fall in love. Fall in love. Oh, and centaur no. blood, he says, is an aphrodisiac. If you take my blood and pour it on the clothing of a man that you want to fall in love with you, as long as you think of him while you put the blood on the clothing, and as long as he is the very next person to put on that clothing, it'll make him fall in love with you. Would you like some? She goes, I would like some. He goes, the only thing is, the blood cannot touch you at any time. If it ever touches you, it ruins the spell. <coughs> she goes, it'll never touch me. She gets out a little glass vial, and while he's sitting there bleeding, she takes the little vial and goes, K-perk! and fills up the whole thing with blood, but giving blood to the doctor, and then takes a cork and goes, K-perk! and seals it up. And she goes, thank you, dying horse boy. And he goes, and dies. <laughs> Years go by. 
things go pretty well between Heracles and Daenerys. And one day, women start talking. <laughs> women. And they start spreading these rumors that Heracles has fallen in love with a random person in the hallway. Hey! <laughs> She's just creeping. Uh, the rumors that Daenerys has, that Heracles has fallen in love with another girl. And so they say, hey, have you heard that he fell in love with this other princess? Daenerys gets all jealous and decides that she's going to use the centaur blood she's been using for all of these years and hiding it away. And so she goes and uncorks the centaur blood, pours it all over this cloak while thinking of Heracles. Fall back in love with me. And she smears it all around without touching the blood. I love you so much, Heracles. And then she folds it up and sends it to him in a package while he's out adventuring. And one day he gets the package on his adventures little thing that says, I love you so much, think of me while you wear this. And Heracles goes, oh, that's so sweet of her. And he goes and opens it up and sees it's a cloak, takes off his lion cloak, puts on the cloak from his wife, and goes, that is so, ah! and starts screaming. Because it turns out the centaur lied to him. Centaur blood is not an aphrodisiac. Because the centaur, when he got shot with the arrow, realized there was something wrong. Because what was wrong? It was yeah. There was the ash from what? Yeah. The arrow. From the hydra had hydra blood on the arrows, <laughs> and so the hydra, the centaur tricked her into killing Heracles. And it was when she put the blood on the cloak, and then he put the cloak on him. It was not a love potion. It starts burning his skin right there. His skin starts to burn and melt. A normal human would fall down dead. Does Heracles fall down dead? No, because he's superhuman. Instead, he falls down and just screams. It hurts! Ah! And rolls on the ground and prays for death. But he's too strong to die. And he's not strong enough to heal from it. So he decides to end his own life. But it's not easy to end his life because he's half God. He has to commit. So he gets up and runs and jumps into a gigantic fire and burns himself alive while the blood is burning his skin. But it's still not enough to kill him. So then he has a bunch of his friends come out with bows and arrows, and they all shoot him while he is burning, and while the centaur blood is going through him, and while all of that is going on, it's enough to finally kill him. And Heracles finally lays down and goes, It is time for me. Ah, and he finally dies. In the afterworld, Hera finds out about it, and she goes, that was kind of bad. I feel kind of guilty about that one. She's like, you didn't actually do anything, and I kind of ruined your whole life, and the whole burning, and the shooting, and the fire. All right. Hera forgives Heracles and says, you know what? Why don't you come up to Mount Olympus and live with us, and I apologize, and you can even marry my daughter. And Heracles marries Hera's daughter by the name of Hebe, and he and Hebe get married and live happily ever after up on Mount Olympus. And that's the ending of Heracles. Nice. I mean, except for the part with the dying and the burning and the torture. Yeah. But on that, it was like all adorable and good. Did you have any other questions of Heracles' labors that I can help you with? Goose? Um, remember how we skipped the third and the fourth book? Yeah. yeah not, do you have any questions about not going over them? You had to read them. Mm -hmm. That's not a question. Good stuff. All right. La! All right. So, my question is, yes. do you know how... Uh, Hercules, his first wife was Megara? Yes. Well, my question is, why... So, did he see them as monsters, or were they actually monsters? He saw them as monsters. Oh, so they weren't actually No, monsters. just a hallucination. Oh, okay. Yeah. That makes more sense. Yeah, that works for me. Then, pew, let's begin the fun stuff. Oh, wow. Or whatever this is called. <laughs>